was giving talent Boys were just too late So they try to put me down But it makes me more ambitious Success is sweet But revenge is so delicious Skiers gonna hate just back with another pre-game stats breakdown. Starting off on the red team, we are going to have LeBlanc, Trinomir, Thresh, Caitlyn, and Nocturne versus the blue team who has Aatrox, aka A -A Aatrox, Wukong, Lucian, Lux, and Janna. So, this is going to be a very interesting match, uh, mainly since I have not seen a Trinomir in a very long time. I see a lot more Jaxes than Trinomirs as far as like the melee hyper AD carries uh, you just really don't see Trinomir that frequently so I'm interested to see where he stacks up in the in the whole situation on if he can still be this unstoppable monster that he was once um, so the average ELO is pretty much hovering around the same area uh, everyone's around diamond 5 diamond 4 blue team has a little bit of an advantage as far as overall ELO but not by much those two divisions are relatively close to each other but as for uh, the actual rank statistics, you will see that the red team has an overall win percentage of 51.9% when the blue team has a 51.6%. This is a 0.3% advantage in favor of the red team, which is basically nothing. Uh, so I'm not too worried about either of these teams. It could really go either way. It should be a very, very exciting match. And the only thing I'm a tad bit worried about is that the red team, as far as the current role that they typically play... There's only 35.2% of the people on their current role and 54.2% of people on the blue team on their current role. Uh, and then when you take a look at the champion statistics, you'll see that the red team only has 88 games played total on the champions that they're playing. As to where the blue team has 278 games, which is a significant amount more. Uh, so it looks like... It still could either go either way. It really could go either way. You really have no idea. This one's almost impossible to predict. So let me know your predictions in the comments section below, and we'll just kind of get in the game and go from there. Hey, what's going on, everyone? Strider's back with another episode of the Diamond League. Finally back here, and this is going to be a very interesting game. We have a lot of oddball champions in this particular game. Uh, a lot of weird ones on the red team being Trindamir. Uh, it's definitely somebody I've not seen in a very long time. As for the blue team, I mean, I have not seen Lux in a long time either. And uh, Wukong, he's pretty common nowadays, but uh, it's just one of those champions. He's really a, a huge hit or miss for the most part. Although, I guess most champions are hit or miss, but... Uh, you have to be really good at Wukong. It's just, a lot of people have said the same thing, but Wukongs, they're either really, really easy to kill or they're very, very difficult to kill. And so it's the same thing with damage. A lot of them, they just don't do a lot of damage, but then some of them do a great, like an obscene amount of damage. So it'll be interesting to see how uh, how it all unravels. Trindamir in the top lane against AA Trox, though. That is one lane I'm really looking forward to viewing. I really have absolutely no idea how that's going to pan out. It should be a very, very odd... Minions It'll be an odd fall. lane, to say the least. Uh, it kind of just... A lot of it depends on managing resources, as most lanes do. Uh, but Trindamir is one of those... He's kind of like an all-or-nothing champion. Obviously, he has to build up his rage so he can get crits more frequently. And then it's kind of RNG-based. It's all based off random number generation. Is he going to get that crit? Is he not? Because if he gets to the point where he's just kind of hitting minions, he builds up his rage bar. Even if he doesn't and he gets you know, two or three crits up in a row, then Aatrox just lost his lane. He has to. He is forced to go back. And then Trinomir, I mean, while he can't push all that hard... It just, uh, it makes it so difficult to come back from that. Yeah, and so I'm a little bit worried about that. Uh, it's a combination of that and the fact that, ooh, a nice snare coming out from Lux. Uh, this should not be something, this should not be a lane that LeBlanc has a problem with against Lux. Uh, Lux is one of those champions she does require to hit that snare to really do anything since all of her skills are skill shots and LeBlanc has so many ways of just blinking around the map. She should basically 
never get snared. And as well as should... Oh, level 2 coming up first on the red team. Are they going to do anything? That's the question. Wow! It trucks absolutely annihilating. Ooh, this took as well. Trindamir is starting further behind. Uh, kind of expected, kind of like I said earlier. He He's one of those all or nothing champions. He's get up early. It's not going to go in his favor. But LeBlanc should definitely not be going up. Oh, huge attacks from Trindamir. That is going to be a nice ignite, and that is a really early first blood. At 3 minutes, 23 seconds. And wow, that hook just not quite landing. It almost looked like Ryan didn't even react to the Lucian. He didn't even react to the hook either. He didn't see it, he didn't expect it, or he was like, oh, that's not going to hit me anyway unless I move. So I'm just going to keep attacking. It's sometimes it's hard to say whether, because... <laughs> Obviously, Thrush tried to predict him moving back, so that's one of your main instincts, is moving back so you don't get hit by that hook. It's so powerful and so potent. A nice hook going on, gets the play, but it doesn't seem like Kaelin's really doing much. Ooh, does it get a nice 90 caliber net as well as the Piltor with Peacemaker. Only one of them hits down on Ryan, gonna force the potion out of him. It's out of potions completely, and a lot of nice harass coming out from Freak on Kaelin. Oh, uh, this could be very bad. LeBlanc going really close to dying. And the flash from... Oh, this is so not good. That is going to be... Ooh, LeBlanc just barely gets out. She was not able to explode Singularity as she was dead. That sucks. Sometimes I wish it exploded immediately. It didn't last the full time. But other times, like if I was that LeBlanc, I'd be pissed. It just exploded immediately. Like, no! But luckily... Don't have to worry about it. So we're in this top lane, man, once again. I don't know what this Trinomir is going to plan. Is planning on doing. I really don't know. A nice hook going again. Real hard in the paint to get that. And uh Doctor's not really gonna be able to do anything. Force the flash out of Jana. That is a very, very powerful flash. Jana is no longer gonna have that flash for level six. Even though she's level three. I don't, yeah, I don't think she'll have it right away for level 6. And as you see, both Caitlyn and Thrush both hit level 4 around the same time. They should be okay once they should be able to have that flash up. Still. They should still have that flash up by level 6. You want you always want to try really hard in order to get that. Uh, to make sure your flash is up because it can be very detrimental if you do not have your flash at level 6. Uh, that's typically when you get the huge ganks coming off, or uh, just obviously right when both of them hit level 6. That's when they get in and they have all their abilities to be able to lock you down. Especially with Janna, she almost requires that. It's really nice if she can hit a tornado and then kind of run forward, flash past you, and start her monsoon, split both of you up, and it's just like, it's perfect. Uh, it's just not easy to do, but it requires all of your abilities, especially with that exhaust going to need that as well. One of the great things about Lux uh, against this LeBlanc is that Lux can easily outrun LeBlanc uh, just with the AoEs, the consistent AoEs that she always has to be able to throw down. Although in this particular case, LeBlanc is not doing a very good job and that's kind of disappointing. But we'll, we'll see how it goes in the long run. I mean, it's still one kill to one kill, even on gold overall. And the red team clearing out the wards down on the bottom lane. Wukong coming in. This could be the huge gank that they are waiting for. Oh, they're going to do it. And that is going to be a three on three. Are they going to be able to do anything with it, though? Wukong. Oh, it gets caught out. This could be a very dangerous position. Again, like I said, three on three. And that's not going to be a good one. And now LeBlanc goes hard in the paint. Actually ends up taking a ton of damage. Aatrox also taking a couple points of damage from that tower. Nothing too much, but he is still up quite a bit. Up by 10 CS as well as a kill. Tremir is not having a good time. The thing that, oh man, uh, one of the things that is a huge pet peeve in my mind when playing with the Janna as support, uh, throwing on the shield to the tower. Uh, it's it's good because it prevents tower from taking damage, but it really sucks because it prevents the whole 
uh, two shot to the minion and then you can just auto attack it for the kill for the melee minion. And then the two auto attacks on the ranged minion with the one. Uh, with one tower try. It just kind of messes that whole thing up completely because it gives the tower attack damage. Uh, so if your AD carry is not aware of the differences, then that's really going to mess them up a lot. Um, and I'm not talking a little. It's going to mess them a lot. As you see, Lucian, since Kaelin does push pretty hard, uh, you see that Kaelin is up by about you know almost 20 CS at this point. And I will have to say a lot of it is in the contribution to uh, those kills going down to the tower. Kaelin, ooh, getting away from that tornado just barely gets slowed down, but is able to get that 90 caliber net to get out of the way. Exactly what she needed to do. Uh, so Freak doing a great job so far. Uh, is up, like I said, by almost 20 assists and a huge hook coming down. And oh, it's going to be a play. Is it going to be enough? Freak really needs to get into the grass. Is he going to start up anything else? Does not look like it. He's a little bit too slow. And that is, once again, a lot of damage going on in the tower. Aatrox taking a couple hits from the tower. It doesn't seem to really be affecting Trinidad at all. Or the tower shots aren't affecting Aatrox at all. And that's not a good situation in Trinimir, because if you're gonna tower dive Trinimir, you have to make them pay for it. Although you can't really if you're above level six or six or higher, you can't really do anything about it. Oh, they definitely saw it. They're going for it in a beautiful play, knocking him back the calling, doing as much damage as possible, but it's definitely not gonna be enough. So that is a lot of cooldowns wasted by the blue team. Not going to be able to pick up any kills for that whatsoever. And again, it is still one kill to one kill. 12,000 gold apiece. Uh, Wukong possibly coming back in, but it uh, looks like Nocturne may be coming down in through the Dragon Pit, which would be a great idea because they could. I don't know if they'd be able to tower dive, they would have to hit it. Again, just a little bit of damage going down to Aatrox. I'm really worried about Trinomir. He is so far behind, almost down by 30 CS at the or sorry, 20. Because I can do that. 20 CS, uh, kind of just how, as much as Lucian is down. And that's why the game is so even. It's because bottom lane is just kind of winning out for top lane. And holy cow, that is a lot of damage. Is he going to die from that? He does get executed by the... Oh my god. He didn't smite. He wasn't quite there. Aatrox dies, and this is... <laughs> yeah, that that really sucks. That really sucks. If Blue Team was smart right now, they would be going for that dragon. They know, or they knew at the time, right when it happened, I would have made a beeline for it because bot lane left. There is no jungler. Wow, that's a ton of damage coming on to Wukong. And LeBlanc actually used her ignite, and this is going to be really bad. That's a ton of damage. Yeah. Nice job by Lux, just landing the skill shots that are necessary, and that is still a really even lane. So LeBlanc is doing a decent job just trying to stay relevant. Uh, actually getting a chalice for the extra magic resist. Not sure if that's the best choice. A lot of people go for it, some people don't. Uh, going against, uh, I also don't. I don't know. It's, it's debatable. With as much mobility that LeBlanc has, I don't think the movement speed is really all that necessary. Uh, from the level 2 boots, I think she could have went for something a little bit more valuable. And, wow, a nice tornado actually going out, but that is going to stop. The calling is still going on. Smashing down the rush down to about half HP. And I haven't seen any other ultimates coming in, but. This may happen. That is going to be a ton of damage if LeBlanc gets in here, which they're both spotted out, and that is a ton of damage. Once again, I don't know why there was no stopping that. And ooh, nice ultimate wasted, and wow, that is not a good job. Actually pulling, pulling Wukong into the LeBlanc at the rest just killing. And now, this could be a very bad position for Nocturne, taking a ton of damage. Gonna be able to pick up a kill, and this could be so much. Yeah, the Flash Monsoon picks up a beautiful double kill, and is Lucian gonna be able to take that out? No, it's gonna be Lux. 
and a beautiful four for one play all started by the massive misplay coming out from Thresh. They could have easily disengaged that. They could have easily disengaged that after Wukong started that ultimate. I mean, LeBlanc even went back into that bush or went closer to that brush. I don't know why she did that. They had a ward in there. So it's just two really, really, really huge misplays from the red team. And now they're gonna lose potentially two towers from it. And I don't know if they're gonna lose Dragon from this either or what all is going to happen. Uh, the blue team is pinging down for Dragon, so it's very possible that they are going to go for this finally. And they definitely need it. Yep, they're going for it. The shield from Janus can provide a lot of extra additional tankiness. A lot of damage coming out from the flank. Not a whole lot, nothing to really scare him off. And wow, a beautiful steal coming out from Nocturne. Taking that dragon in a, a huge flay as well, disengaging that Wukong away from the fight. Wow, that's just... That sucks. The blue team had it. They used everything that they could. And now they could also potentially lose this top tower. Red team really swinging it back into gear. <laughs> yeah. They were able to take down that tower as well as that dragon. And they're only a thousand gold behind now. LeBlanc has a blue buff. This is a really, really big advantage and a huge, huge ups for that red team. Oh, a nice grab coming down. And he's going to get a play to stop it. And that is going to bring her right into it. Is it going to be enough? Gets the auto attack. And yes, that is going to be a free kill coming down on a Caitlyn. Caitlyn really needed that. She's been needing more kills. She's been down, kind of losing to Lucian just because of the kills that he's had. Uh, he's still 2-1-2, two, two, which doesn't give him a massive advantage. Uh, but either way, it's still pretty, pretty big. Uh, Caitlyn, with the amount of crazy farming that she's been able to do, she is ahead by 500 gold. think about 500 gold is it's not really a lot of gold it's not gonna provide them with the amount that she needs in order to carry and that is gonna be a huge huge up but Nocturne now almost sacrificing himself trying to go directly in but that's a huge double stun snare coming out and the monsoon isn't gonna keep her alive yes it is and that is a double kill for the Lux beautiful play for the blue team picking up the backup where necessary and that is going to be a Kaelin ultimate. Nope, going to get blocked. Holy, holy shit. I can't believe that. Oh my gosh, the double kill. It looks so good. And now she has double buffs and LeBlanc doesn't have buff. And oh, that looks so close to landing. Man, all this, this game is just getting a little bit more intense. More intense than it should be. So much shield, so many shields, so much shield, such shield, very doge. But uh, the, the combination of Lux's shield is kind of an AoE shield, which is always super nice. And oh, he's going on, he gets exhausted. Is it going to be enough? Yes, he's going to be able to pick up the kill. And his rage is not going to be in this. Lucian picks up the one person they didn't want to get the kill. They were definitely hoping that it was going to go on to Dana, but it just wasn't quite there. And that is a lot of damage. You can tell that LeBlanc doesn't have a lot of experience playing with Punch. She does not know how to use her distortions very well at all. At all. At all. But either way, Blue Team is still picking it up. I mean, it's 9 kills to 5. They're up by, you know, 4 or 5,000 gold. Is this oh, no, sorry. I don't know how he even came close to that. Uh, so, huh, two to three thousand gold up. Not even close to four or five, but it was still a tight battle. I mean, 20 minutes in, that is not a huge gold lead. I mean, if it was four minutes in, yeah, that would be <laughs> that would be a huge gold lead. But 20 minutes or 17 minutes in, that is that is virtually nothing. Again, that's just a, a dragon at this point. Dragon and a tower. Uh, towers are even at two and two. Uh, so there's still one more outer tower for each team to pick up almost for free. I mean, the bottom tower on the red team is virtually untouched as far as I recall. Yeah, I mean, there's not really much to it. And Trindamir going hard in the paint. Actually forcing back AA Trox. Because 
very surprising. I didn't expect that to happen so quickly. Uh, it's 17 minutes in the game. He does have played to the Ruin King, but his cooldown was down. He didn't even have to use it. And it kind of just forced Aatrox away out of it. And that is a ton of damage going on to LeBlanc. She just like ran into that. I do not know what she was doing. And that is not going to be good. That is a free kill. Yeah, this is not a good situation for them to be at all. Wow, like, they engage on a 4v5 is really not a good idea. Kaylin's not even there either. It is a horrible situation for the red team to be in. They're able to get something. The Thresh throws out a lantern, try to get a little bit of help. Should have thrown it on himself. The Koli coming out doing as much damage as possible. And now that Kaylin's in the fight, it's just... It's too a little too late. I mean, she got like, two auto attacks in that whole fight, and there was no LeBlanc. But there's no way that's really going to do anything. Oh, uh, it's a huge initiation. That is going to be an ignite for a free kill. But Laser now coming down, and another free kill. That's just not Ooh, really nice pickup for LeBlanc. Able to get that Lux finally. That pesky Lux. Uh, but dying for an inner tower, definitely not a bad thing. I don't believe that she got shut down, though, either. So it was a really good choice by Lux to sacrifice herself for the greater good. Yeah, I don't believe there was anything wrong with that. There was, there was no reason not to. I, don't, I think they would have got the tower regardless. Uh, so it probably wasn't necessary, but uh, to secure it instead of relying on a potential risk. I, I don't know, it's a close call. It's it's one of those judgment calls you just kind of have to make last second or on the fly. Sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't. That one, I mean, it did work, yes. I just don't know if it's necessary. Nice job catching out that Nocturne. There's no way Nocturne is getting away from this. LeBlanc is just, oh, she's able to get the snare. And the calling now coming out, and it's not going to be enough. Almost gets away with it, but if it wasn't for those pesky kids. And Caitlyn tries to take the blue buff, but unfortunately, unable to pull it off. The blue team once again going for this dragon. And this is going to put the red team even further behind. Uh, if they could steal this dragon too... Yeah, again, I mean, the Nocturne was dead is a really, really good call for them to take that dragon. Whenever the jungler is dead and the dragon is spawned, that's the ideal time to go for either Baron or Dragon. Trinmere taking a ton of damage. I don't know if he's going to be able to get this. Use the Blade of the Rune King. Unending Rage. Oh, is it going to be out? He's able to get enough, but. Oh, Janice come out. She's so fast. She's going to slow it down. Just get to throw the pop up. Is it gonna be enough? The tornado. Oh, so good now. <laughs> oh, no, not quite. <laughs> we tried. We tried. But it wasn't enough. Good try, Trinity. It's yeah, that sucks. I mean, it gets caught out. That's what happens when you split push. If you split push like that, you're gonna get caught out. It's just a matter of time as far as when the other team is going to catch on of what you're doing or when they start caring. But when it comes down to inner towers, that's usually when people start caring a lot more. And you just can't split push the way you normally would. I mean, it'd be great and good, but you just, you just can't. It doesn't work that way. Bam, a ridiculous amount of damage. Mid flight on that dark passage. Mid passage gets blown up. Uh, great job once again getting snared out by Lux. It should be virtually impossible to get snared out by Lux as a LeBlanc. I don't know how it's happening, but uh, yeah, like I said before, this LeBlanc player is not experienced, uh, which is becoming painfully, uh, painfully aware. Oh, either that or she's really strong. Uh, I can go with strong. Maybe strong. A huge, huge Budwell pop passive, and oh my gosh, the blocks do so much work. And Wukong is able to do a lot, and that laser does a ridiculous amount of damage. And two members of the blue team are so low, it ends up going down. But is the unending range gonna be enough? It's gonna get a great slow, and the light steel, oh, not quite a double kill, almost gets it off. The calling now coming out from Lucian, is it gonna be enough? Now, Kaylin does pick up a kill, and the dark passage 
safely gets her out. That is going to be an ultimate from Kaylin, who almost takes down Lucian. But we all knew that wasn't going to be enough. Wow, that was that was a little bit too intense. I don't know about that one. Two for two exchange. Uh, by being behind by 5,000 gold, that was a really good trade for the red team. Uh, granted, they didn't come out ahead. They didn't come out behind. They came out exactly where they needed to. I mean, obviously, before you can start winning, you have to stabilize. Uh, I've said it before, and I'll say it again. Uh, the first step to it is losing less and less and less to where you can stabilize completely, and then you can gradually start winning. But it becomes... It's very difficult. It's obviously an uphill battle. Yeah, and it will, it will always take time. As far as item comparisons go, let's see, we have uh, Blade of the Rune King on both top laners. Static Shivers of Randuin's moment on Aatrox, uh, which I like and I don't like because they're almost, they almost counteract each other. I like the additional movement speed on Trinimir. I think it really does help him quite a bit. He doesn't necessarily need it, but it does still help. As far as the junglers go, I mean, Randu is almost for Sunfire Cape. Both of them have Spirit Elder Lizard. Uh, Warden Spinel coming out for Wukong. Not a lot. Wow, that's a ton of damage. It's gonna be enough. He pops down the Randu. It's in a huge pop up coming out for Wukong. And then it's gonna be a massive cyclone. Knocking them both back. And a nice spell shield. Ooh, the calling not quite reaching. And Kaelin is getting pushed back so far. This is going to be a lot of damage. The box really slowing everything down. And is it going to be enough? No, it will not be. That is a two for zero exchange in favor of the blue team. The red team is forced back off, and I don't know if they're going to be able to do anything with this. Blue team is now in the face of the red team, really trying to push it back, and Lucian is doing a really bad job at that. Oh, Randu and slowing down Trinkmere, finally doing what he needs to do keeping them occupied as long as possible. And, and like I said, Trinimir is just completely out of these fights. I mean, he's gonna be one of the, one of the strongest members. But keeping him out of the fight is absolutely huge. Uh, LeBlanc should easily be able to get a snare on that. I don't know what he's doing. Throw a Q! Good job. So they kill a clone. Uh, I hate giving them the clone because the clone's worth so much gold. It's like if you fed as LeBlanc, your clone is almost worth more than you are as an actual member. <laughs> it's like killing Timbers. Timbers gives like 150 gold or something ridiculous. Why? But it does happen. Yeah, unfortunately, it does happen. But you always have to just prevent that from happening. On a normal basis, because you almost always there will almost always be games where you do feed at times, and that's when you really need to uh, kind of just back it up a little bit. And this is to me, this is kind of a slap in the face because you have Lucian going with Triforce against Freak. I mean, Freak doesn't even have Triforce. That's just messed up. Um, although I have seen quite a few people building the Triforce on the Lucian, so I'm not saying. It's on purpose, but to me, it's kind of a slap in the face just because it makes me laugh. Uh, but. Ooh, dragon, there may be a dragon fight. Lux is kind of out of position, but Lucian now coming in, and that's gonna be huge. That is a huge calling, doing a lot of damage onto Kaelin. Thresh is gonna take the brunt of that just so Caitlyn doesn't die, and that should be a really easy dragon pick off for the blue team. And now, oh my gosh, Wukong is in a really tough position. Gets snared out. And the blue team should easily be able to pick up this dragon. Yeah, easily, easily, easily. Ooh, a nice snare going down onto Wukong after he was invisible. Not something you see very frequently. Uh, it was perfect. It was at the perfect timing, though, so it was just like, eh. It's always so rewarding, especially if you get a Kha'Zix 
right when he throws down his ultimate or after like a half second if you just nail him with this you know your whole team knows exactly where he is there's only there's usually only one invisible person on the team, so it really helps blue team still have not gotten this inhibitor and that is going to really provide them with it and wukong is going in hard but the paint no is just throwing it off so they can get that inhibitor and that's gonna be a huge laser it's a blasting freak in the face and that is not going to be enough but the box really slowing down that wukong this is not going to end up good that is a double kill for lux and man this is a really really piss poor position for the team to be in and yeah it just it can play 4v4 all day premier is not doing anything when it comes to this game He's, he's finally back into the fight and he's starting to get some kills he gets a double kill is that a triple kill that is a triple kill it's about time Trinomir makes in a fucking appearance stop split pushing for once in your goddamn life he's now five and four gets that triple kill he's trying to life steal up a bit as much as possible and there's no way there there's no way they're going for baron there's only like 20 seconds left on the timer. This is no, oh my God. Okay, so what Red Team is doing right here is uh, they're doing what is called throwing the game. I don't know if you know about it, but it's pretty powerful. Uh, they really do like throwing the game, it seems. Uh, Trinomir, he was the only real defense. Oh, are they gonna do it? Well, they are able to get it. Oh my gosh, I can't believe they're actually able to get that. Don't do it. Uh, they don't really care. Trinomir needs to get out of there. Oh my gosh, Trin they have to keep Trinomir alive. If they can kite around for Trinomir to stay alive, they still have a chance to come back in this game. It's not a big chance, uh, but they are only down by 3,000 gold right now, which is not a lot. Well, 3.5. As well as they have all the gold that you get from Baron in stats worth. So, it's, it's one of those situations where it can still go either way, but, oh man. Yeah, I really have no idea how this is gonna end out. As far as sports go, it uh, looks like, yeah, the Mikhail's Crucible, of course, on Janna. Kind of going more of a Leona build action. Uh, Thresh gets a lot more RM, or magic resistant AP from his passive, so he doesn't really need as much. Uh, but he's going to go for that Ruby Side Stone, and of course, the Talisman, so everybody gets Talisman. You just Giant Spell, because Giant Spell always helps. Uh, just getting as many armors, all the armors, uh, getting as much armor as possible. Trindamir, oh, they both have GAs, this is not going to be good. Uh, Janna's able to slow it down, Janna does have the boots mobility. Force the proc, wow, really good job, forces the Blade of the Rune King off Trindamir. So, Janna being forced to go, wow! Huge amounts of damage, and oh, the snare going down. Is it going to be enough? He's going to pick it up. LeBlanc actually gets it with the assist. At least he got the assist on it. That's really good. Purple Team's inhibitor is about to respond, and they are pushing down the tower that the super minions are pushed down on, and that's a huge potential initiate coming in from Wukong. Oh, uh, does get does he get blown up? So close. Yes, he will end up getting taken out by Freak. And now the flag kind of knocking back the rest of the team. And this can be a very dangerous push. Everyone is running back before Trinomir called all of them chickens. They're just kind of throwing it up. Oh, it was... oh my gosh! Right into the cupcake. That was a horrible decision to just run into that cupcake. Just remember, guys. Don't get into the van of strangers. Let's see, I'm informative and educated. I am educational. 
You know, if I could talk properly, maybe I could be educational. <laughs> that's not that's not gonna happen today. No, don't worry about it. You'll just be less educational. <laughs> So far, breaking down the CS, let's see, Trinomir is up by 60 CS, tied on kills, tied on assists. He does have some deaths to him, uh, which is a lot of it's due to, to straight split pushing. For the jungler, you'll see that Wukong is up by about 15 CS, one kill, and nine assists. Wukong is doing a great job. Uh, Cyclone is doing, his, he's nailed a lot of his Cyclones, which is really helping in these team fights, just knocking everybody up. As far as mid lane goes, 10 kills to 5 and tied on assist for the Lux and the Blanc. Uh, and Lux is up uh, by about 10 15. Oh, well, yeah, closer to 15 20 CS. Uh, Blue team got another dragon, so I believe that's their second dragon? I think that's their second one. The team stole the first one, they got two. Yeah. And wow, 100 CS deficit going in favor of Kaelin. And this is very, very, very dangerous. Uh, because if the red team continues like this, this could be a very, very dangerous team with the amount of threat that they have. With the combination of Trinomir and Kaelin, that could be very bad. Oh, that's not good. This is a really good job by... Oh, Wukong is trying to force out as much as he can as far as item abilities, potential summoner spells. Like I said, he's one of the best initiators right now on the team. If Lux doesn't land anything, then it's pretty much all comes down to Wukong. Oh my gosh, a huge fight. Once again, a nice laser coming out from Lux, smashing down two members of the red team, but it seems like they're getting enough magic resist where they're able to sustain that a little bit more. And it's about freaking time that they get some magic resist. I mean, there was really only that one. Uh, they definitely needed the armor with extra AD that Janna was providing. Uh, but now with Wukong dead, the majority of their initiation is gone, and Thresh is in a terrible position, and so is Long. Oh, that's a horrible position for him to be in LeBlanc. Oh, LeBlanc at Snipe doesn't even try to move. I don't know what he's doing. That's gonna be really bad. No spell shield coming out. That is a very odd position for him to be in. And holy cow. It's gonna reduce the AD as much as possible, but the shield from Janna is gonna be just a little bit too much. And that is going to be a really easy pick up for the Lux. Again, it's just a, a, a stream of bad decisions and misplays from the red team that are giving the blue team a huge advantage that they should not even have. They didn't do anything with their Baron buff. Uh, they were able to push down a tower. Uh, I think the second one they didn't push down until after it was gone. Uh, but blue team is now going in for the skull winner once again, trying to just keep that advantage as much as they can. And that is going to greatly help them. Beautiful job by Jan actually using the tornado to pop up a block in the middle of it. And that is a instant explosion from Lux. Once again, nice nice play, but I mean, I just, I don't see anything really coming from this. Thresh is going off all on his lonesome. Horrible idea. And a beautiful initiation with the Cyclone Wukong. And this is way too much. Kaelin ends up going down. Thresh is going to be shortly to follow. Thresh is here. Thresh is going to have to get a Pensa kill in order for them to stay in this fight. And he's just running away from the fight. Even with the CC that he has, he does not want to be involved in this fight whatsoever. He's just pushing down the minions. He's just pushing down the minions as they come. Yeah, at this point, without splitting the damage at all, with everybody else just focusing on other people, there's, there's absolutely no way. That he's gonna look at in this. Yeah, without the Guardian Angel, the Saw still available. He's gonna have the Unending Rage. 
No, is it not going to be enough? LeBlanc does end up picking up a kill. Is it going to be enough though? Thresh is still alive. The play. It's going to get a minion. It's going to get a minion. Yeah, there's no way. Yeah, I don't know whether to cry a little bit. There was just so many misplays. It's something I don't expect to see from this high level of play. Uh, those that many misplays. That was a lot of misplays, uh, and just a lot of really embarrassing mechanics wise. Uh, it had nothing to do with teamwork. Oh, well, I mean, obviously a lot of it has to do with teamwork. But in that particular game, there was just a lot of mechanical misplays. A lot of. Uh, a lot of people drunk on the weekday, it seems, on a Monday evening. Nobody likes Mondays, I get it. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, guys, uh, thanks for watching the game, and make sure to hit that like button if you like the video. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you tomorrow. Peace.